Hey everyone, so after Wano, I believe that we will be maintaining the four emperor system. It's just that we will have a new set of emperors, and those four will be Shanks, Blackbeard, Luffy, and yes, Eustace Kid. Is that blasphemous to suggest that Kid deserves a spot amongst these great pirates? Is it even correct to assume that the Yonko system will still exist after Kaido and Big Mom are defeated? And what happens with Trafalgar Law in that case? I'm going to be addressing all of these one point at a time. So before we get into it, make sure to subscribe for more One Piece videos every week. And also make sure you keep yourself safe online with Surfshark, the sponsor for this video. Surfshark is the VPN I use. I know many of you use VPNs. And in case you don't know, VPNs let you easily change your location online to literally anywhere you want on the planet. So the last time you looked up a TV show or a movie and you saw that it's only available for streaming in certain countries, you could actually instantly access that with Surfshark VPN. So basically hundreds of more options to select from in terms of anime, movies, and TV. Now, the important part is using a secure VPN that encrypts your data. What does that mean? Well, it means that while you're virtually traveling the globe, as long as you are using Surfshark VPN, your personal data is 100% protected, meaning you may as well be invisible. Your personal data cannot be acquired by big companies or cyber criminals. And on top of this, Surfshark VPN automatically blocks ads and malware. You are completely protected no matter where you virtually travel to or what you watch. Not even Surfshark itself knows what you do online. So instant access to countless anime, movies, and TV shows that were blocked for you before, your data completely protected, no ads, no malware, and for my viewers, you can actually get Surfshark right now, today, for 83% off and three months free by using my code MORGE. The link is in the description below. And you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have literally zero risk trying it out. Again, link in the description below. So that aside, to begin with, is the Yonko system even going to exist after this battle in Wano? Well, yes. I don't see why things would change. As a reminder, what are the emperors of the sea? Well, most of the world is ruled by the world government, but there is one section of the ocean, the second half of the Grand Line, known as the New World, that is not controlled by the world government, but rather it is ruled by pirates that are so powerful that they are known as emperors. As we learned more about how the emperors function, we learned that it is essentially exactly what it sounds like. The islands of the New World are generally divided up among the emperors, who fly their flags over given territories. Those essentially make up each of their empires. When I see readers talking about how the Yonko system might be dissolved or abolished at the end of Wano, that doesn't really make any sense, as the Yonko system, it, it's not referring to some legal system or some government contract that just gets dissolved or abolished. No, the Yonko system refers to simply the current state of affairs, with the New World being dominated by pirate military regimes that are beyond the control of the world government. So in that case, why would defeating Kaido and Big Mom magically end the system of pirate emperors? That doesn't end the system of pirate empires. Shanks would still have his empire. Blackbeard would still have his empire. And really with Luffy defeating Kaido and Big Mom, he's essentially just removing their rule and swapping in his new empire. After all, Fishman Island will soon be flying Luffy's flag. We know that for a fact that that is what both Fishman Island and Luffy want after Big Mom is defeated. So Luffy is guaranteed to have territories soon. Not to mention, Wano will likely be a territory that is under Luffy's protection going forward. Very possibly the same thing with Zo. So there's no system being dissolved here. There are still going to be a set of pirates that have so much power that they have entire territories under their control in the New World. And that is simply what being a pirate emperor means. Kaido and Big Mom being defeated doesn't mean Blackbeard and Shanks' empires magically disappear. All it means is we're getting a new empire established, which would be Luffy and his territories, that he is very clearly intent on establishing. Now, you might be asking how Kid fits into this, as Kid has no territories, but we'll get to him shortly. For the moment, I just wanted to establish that yes, the Pirate Emperors will still certainly be a thing after Wano. So, since the Pirate Emperors will still be a thing, why do I believe that it will remain at four Emperors, the Yonko, 
rather than simply turning into three emperors, or I guess the Sanko, if I make a bad Japanese guess. Well, I think that's because what Oda has really built up over the series is not just the title of emperor, but rather this notion of being one of the four emperors. It's really the title Yonko itself that carries such a tremendous weight in the series. The title Yonko carries so much significance to the reader because of the way that that term specifically has been built up and built up for so long. Seeing Luffy be called, you know, one of the Sanko it just doesn't really have the same ring or prestige or memory attached to it, similar to how when Luffy started being called the fifth emperor, Oda didn't just start saying, you know, the Goko, that's my guess at five emperors in Japanese. We didn't start hearing about Goko Luffy, and I think that's because we do need to see Luffy with that specific title that we are so attached to, Yonko, because it carries so much weight and has been treated with such reverence for so long as the special title in the story of One Piece. Seeing Luffy have that title, Yonko Luffy, is just something that many readers have looked forward to for such a long time because that term Yonko specifically is what feels special in this series. I think that is precisely why Whole Cake Island was sort of a stepping stone to Luffy getting that milestone, with him starting to be called an emperor by some people, but Oda still holding off on using a title like, you know, Goko in the series, as the reality is that the truly meaningful title that will carry the most weight for readers to see is Yonko Luffy. Not Goko Luffy, not Sanko Luffy, but the specific phrase Yonko Luffy, which is something that Luffy will likely have earned only after Wano when he defeats a Yonko himself and completes this saga. If the argument for why it will remain four emperors doesn't sound concrete enough to believe, that's understandable. All I'm saying is that at the very least, the existence of the Emperors of the Sea will still very clearly still be a thing after Wano. Defeating Kaido and Big Mom does not change the existence of Emperors of the Sea in any way, so Luffy will undeniably be an Emperor, as will Shanks and Blackbeard. The only question is if the word Yonko goes away and now it will just be like there are three emperors or something. Or if Luffy is set to still get that final title of Yonko as an achievement at the end of the arc, which carries more meaning than just the general notion of being an emperor that some are already calling him. I'm inclined to believe the latter, that we will see the name Yonko Luffy in the story, which would mean that after Wano, there would need to be a fourth pirate who is being called an emperor. And so here's where Eustace Kid comes in. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Is there likely a large gap in strength between Kid and the other three emperors, meaning Luffy, Shanks, and Blackbeard? Probably. But there are a few things you need to remember. First, not all the emperors need to be equal in strength or notoriety. After all, Blackbeard was acknowledged as an emperor just after beating Marco. That feat was basically enough to make people start considering him to be among the four most powerful pirates in the New World. Does it mean that everyone definitely considered Blackbeard to be equal to Kaido, for example? Not really. I mean, we can look at Blackbeard and see that he clearly stretched the parameters of what it takes to be a Yonko. His bounty is basically half of everybody else's, and his crew so far doesn't seem nearly as impressive as what we've seen from other Yonko. They are clearly still hunting devil fruits and developing. I don't think it'd be strange at all for Kid to come out of Wano with a bounty of around 2 billion, similar to Blackbeard. And in terms of actual strength, sure, Kid is not as strong as other Yonko or doesn't seem to be it just yet, but he was capable of taking down Big Mom at least in a 2v1. And more importantly, there were multiple moments in the fight where Kid did just take on Big Mom head on straight up and did briefly get the better of her. So of course, while he's not quite at that level in general, I don't think he's as far as some may think. Not to mention, the most important fact is that Kid is a Conqueror's Hockey user. So with characters like Luffy and Zoro developing advanced Conqueror's Hockey, it is not unthinkable that Kid could be making that step soon in the future, which we know, of course, is a huge leap forward. Similarly, I don't think Kid's crew is anywhere near as strong as the existing Yonko crews just yet, but at the very least, Killer has been extremely impressive, keeping up with Zoro to a degree, damaging Kaido, taking out a supernova by himself, etc. And it is very possible Kid has other members of his crew that may be relatively strong that simply have not gotten panel time yet. I also have a personal theory some of you may recall as to what I think of the future of Kid's crew, but I won't bother sharing that again here as it overcomplicates things for the purposes of this video. 
But the point being, I think Blackbeard clearly stretched the standards of what it takes to be a Yonko. That's not a commentary on Blackbeard's own strength, since none of us know how strong he is at the moment, but we do know that at least in terms of perception and what it took for people to start calling Blackbeard a Yonko, it was mostly just beating Marco, and Blackbeard today only has a bounty of 2.2 billion. I think Kid could once again stretch the standard of what it takes to be a Yonko just a little bit lower, with the standard having fallen somewhat with the elimination of Kaido and Big Mom. So in the new pirate landscape, Kid could slot into the ranks of the Yonko, just very clearly as the lowest man on the totem pole, possibly with a bounty of about 2 billion, and not the strongest crew out there, but at the very least, a very strong first mate, who can single-handedly defeat other pirates of the worst generation. Not to mention, looking at this hypothetical final batch of emperors, Luffy, Shanks, Blackbeard, and Kid, all of them are set up with significant personal, established dynamics between these four figures. Luffy and Shanks have a bond. Shanks and Blackbeard are sworn enemies. Kid's main vendetta is against Shanks who took his arm. Luffy and Kid have a rivalry. Luffy and Blackbeard are sworn enemies. This would not be a random set of four emperors to have for the end of the series. Rather, the actual personal character dynamics are there and established, and that makes it seem more intentional that this could be the final set of four major pirates contending for supremacy at the end of the story. I will acknowledge that the last problem is that as much as I talked about territories earlier, Kid does not have a territory that we know of. But I think things could work if Kid, like Blackbeard, immediately swooped in post Wano and claimed some of Kaido and Big Mom's leftover territories, just as Blackbeard did for Whitebeard's leftover territories. Now lastly, let me address Trafalgar Law. If Kid and Law are portrayed as rivals in a way, why am I not saying that Law could become an emperor? Well, there's a few factors. First of all, in terms of strength, even though this is going to be controversial, yes, Kid is likely stronger than Law and is being portrayed as such. Even if we as the reader feel that Law looks more impressive, in terms of how it seems like Oda wants things to be interpreted, Oda seems to be pushing the idea that Kid has been one-upping Law each time, with Kid supposedly stealing the show by always doing a finishing move to top Law's finishing move each time. That makes sense that Oda is pushing this idea, as from the start, Kid is the one who was clearly portrayed to be the actual rival to Luffy, someone who is actually directly competing with Luffy, whereas Law has always been someone that Luffy has kind of pushed around. Yes, I understand, to us, as the reader, very often reading these moments throughout the fight and thinking to ourselves that, look, Law's attack probably did more damage, but I'm just saying that at least the way Oda is trying to write it is it seems he's trying to say that Kid is the one always landing the finisher move to the point that Law is getting jealous of it. I do think Kid is ultimately meant to be thought of as the stronger of the two, even if us readers aren't personally as impressed by Kid's abilities because we find them, you know, boring or whatever. Not to mention, if we want to get technical, Look, the reality is that Kid has multiple moments over the course of the fight where he does take on Big Mom directly head on and gets the better of her. Whereas Law is just never written like that. Law is very, very consistently written to only ever get openings through sneak attacks when Big Mom is distracted and focused on something else. Yes, Law's attacks do a lot of damage when he gets the chance for a sneak attack, but Oda has never written Law to be able to actually directly fight straight up against Big Mom the way he has with Kid. That is just a factual point. You can reread the entire Big Mom fight and that's just how Law was written. Even if you want to ignore that and you want to headcanon that Law is just as good of a straight up 1v1 fighter as Kid, well the next point is that Law's crew is actually genuinely terrible. Killer is really the difference maker here. The fact is that Kid's crew, like Luffy's crew, has two members of the worst generation. The fact that Kid has a subordinate that can actually defeat other powerful New World captains does give more credence to the notion that Kid could be considered an Emperor, as an Emperor needs a powerful force backing him. Law is essentially a one-man show, and his crew can literally be easily handled by a few minks. Not to mention, long term in the story we know that Law has a certain ability, the Immortality Operation, which is a Chekhov's gun, that would involve his death meaning there is a strong possibility that Law isn't exactly going to be a prominent figure in the final stage of One Piece, as well as the fact that Law's real dream long term was primarily to take out Doflamingo, which has been fulfilled. Law himself has never expressed a really clear desire to rise to the top of the pirate world the way that Luffy or Kid do. And lastly, that's reflected in the simple fact that Law is not a conqueror, he does not have conqueror's hockey, 
He is not that type of character. And so whereas we could imagine Kid taking another step forward in strength and potentially elevating to Emperor status through Advanced Conqueror's Haki, Law just isn't that type of guy. It's hard to imagine a Yonko, an Emperor of the Sea, who does not even have the basic character trait of a Conqueror's spirit. Law is not written like Luffy or Kid, who stubbornly challenge anyone head on, no matter how strong the opponent is. Law is not written like these other conquerors who will never back down. Law will happily run away if it is more tactical in the moment. Law is a strategist, he is a schemer, he excels in these areas, but he is not written as this conqueror figure who has an extreme drive to reach the top and take out anyone above them. So then what is the future for Law? I personally think Death, a meaningful sacrifice, closes out his arc well perhaps after having learned more about the Will of D. But even if you disagree with him dying, the reality is that for his character, becoming an emperor makes very little sense. Kid, on the other hand, to me, seems likely to join the ranks of the four emperors once Kaido and Big Mom fall. So that may still seem controversial, but let me know your thoughts below and definitely like, comment, and subscribe for more One Piece videos like this. And make sure to get Surfshark VPN for 83% off and three months free by hitting the link in the description below.